This is a no parking sign, and it is broadcasting a rule. You might think that that rule is pretty straightforward. You can't park here. But as any game designer could tell you, that's not the rule this sign's actually signaling. The actual rule being broadcast is, if you park here, there is a chance your car will be towed. You want to know what a real no parking rule looks like? This. I mean, you can try parking your car on that, but good luck. Over the next few episodes of this show, we are going to talk about rules, the building blocks of both gaming and political systems. So, what are rules? Well, first of all, rules define terms and conditions. The rules of chess say that chess is played on an 8x8 board and that you win by putting the enemy king in checkmate. Rules also tell a player what they must do and what they can do. A chess player must move a piece on their turn, and the player gets to choose the piece and decide where it moves to. And perhaps most importantly when considering this in parallel with modern politics, is that rules exist under the assumption of otherwise normal behavior. This idea of otherwise normal behavior as being an implied part of a game's rules is critical. For example, there is no explicit rule in chess saying that you are not allowed to punch your opponent, but there is an implied rule. Now, if a game requires you to do something against normal behavior, then that will get an explicit rule. When playing hide-and-seek, there is an explicit rule that says that the player counting while everybody hides has to keep their eyes closed. And there is not an explicit rule in chess that says you are allowed to have your eyes open, because having your eyes open is otherwise normal behavior. When a player breaks some explicitly written rule in a game, that's pretty easy to adjudicate. But when a player breaks the implied normal behavior part of the rules, that can be a little bit trickier to resolve. After all, who gets the final word on what is normal? Typically, a game's implied normal behavior rules are regulated and penalized by society through social penalties. You can't punch people in chess, Fred. What's the matter with you? But this is a much more complicated issue in politics. What happens when a meaningful portion of society decides that it's in their best interest to overlook social norm violations? When that happens, functionally, it means that this portion of society is attempting to rewrite the rules. And if they succeed, before you know it, punching is allowed in chess. When the norms change, rules change. Now, society's perception of normal behavior is bound to change over time. That just naturally happens. But when that perception of normal behavior gets upended mid-game, that is bound to cause chaos. If during play, one team is rewriting a rule book that the other side never sees until it's too late, it eliminates their ability to create an effective counter-strategy. This very thing has been happening in our politics for some time. It happened little by little at first, but that process has accelerated quickly. Let's look at the Clinton impeachment. Prior to this event, the societal norm was that impeachment was reserved for presidential behavior which threatened our democracy. Everyone just understood that was the rule. You could not impeach a president for any other reason. It just was not done. Until it was. And half the country was okay with changing this norm because, I mean, in the moment, it did help their political team. That impeachment event, to many observers, marks a point of accelerated change in the social norms rules of our political system. Fast forward to today, and it's now normal to threaten a default on our nation's debts, or to deny hearings for Supreme Court appointees, or to openly take steps to limit voter participation, a behavior that used to only happen behind closed doors. Now, naturally, when ideas of normalized behavior are eroded, it feels really unfair to the side not doing the eroding. It starts to breed resentment, and resentment breeds intractability. The side that feels abused can no longer trust the side that's moving the goalposts on societal norms, and the side that's moving the norms will insist that it's just keeping up with the times. So both sides dig in, and the whole idea of societal norms as unwritten rules just breaks down. Which sets the stage for a takeover by whomever is willing to violate societal and political norms for their advantage, which is where the real problems start. That is, unless society acts as a referee and penalizes the side attempting to change those norms. There's value to consistent social norms in a chess match. They allow players to improve over time with practice and study without having to relearn basic assumptions on the fly. And the same is true in politics. 
Maintaining a consistent set of expectations and social norms leads to stability, maintains the ability to compromise, serves as a safeguard against extremism, and, most importantly, preserves the designer's intent. A political system where the best ideas win out. But if we allow the pursuit of short-term advantages to outweigh longer-term perspectives, we can easily get ourselves stuck in a vicious cycle of system sabotage. And the only way out from there is to admit that we ran roughshod over many of those norms for our own political gain. And that's really hard to do. So how do we recover from this? One possible path is to take our implicit rules and make them explicit. To create hard and fast rules that specifically state, if you are running for president, you must hand over your tax returns. And, the president of the United States must put all of their assets in a blind trust when they take office. Of course, the biggest obstacle in the way of that happening is that the people with the power to make these rules explicit often personally benefit from not doing so. Plus, there are a lot of social norm rules. It would take a very long time to codify them all. There are other options, though. For example, we can penalize those who break these norms, even if it means a short-term loss for our team. If our preferred candidate, say, body slams a reporter, or limits access to voting in regions which favor their opponent, or if our preferred political party's apparatus seems to be secretly putting their finger on the scales for one candidate, we cannot just look the other way. Even if it hurts our political team, we have to draw a line and act like the referees we are. Before we go, I've got a quick story. Back in 2003, a quarterback named Nate Hasis set the Central State 8 Conference record for career yards passed in the final play of the last game of the season. But after the game, he discovered that both teams' head coaches had coordinated to ensure that Nate would set the record that night. Those coaches had tried to change the societal norms for the game of football. So Nate took the matter into his own hands and wrote to the conference, demanding that those yards be removed from his stats. And so, they were. Nate didn't want to let those coaches change the future social norms for football, and he sacrificed something personally important to do it. Our political system is supposed to be a contest of ideas freely expressed. And if breaking social norms has become a more effective strategy for the players than having winning ideas, it's up to us to follow Nate's lead to save the system. We'll see you next time.